Hey guys, in today's video, let's go ahead and create a uh, jacket. So to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into ZBrush and I'm going to go to my light box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a base mesh that I can use to extract the uh, geometry from. So uh, let's go ahead and go with this female. I'm going to grab this female, just simply double click on it. And you should uh, have the same option on your end. So to, uh, to use this as a base mesh, let's take a look at the geometry and see uh, what's going on here. So the current subdivision level is set to all the way to level four, and that has a million uh, points, right? So let's go ahead and delete lower. We're not gonna be using the base mesh at all. All we need to do is just simply use it as a um, base foundation to extract our geometry, right? So to create the jacket, um, we could just simply use masking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the lower subdivision and the geometry. And you can see that I'm just left um, with the baked 1 million. All right, so let's just um, start masking. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press X on my keyboard. And when I press X on my keyboard, that's going to activate my active symmetry. And now holding down the S key, I can change the size of my brush. And very quickly holding down the control key, I can just simply paint the uh, jacket that I needed, that I would like um, it to be. So let's just uh, go around and decide how much, you know, how much length it would like to be. So my, my jacket is gonna go maybe all the way to the hip and uh, holding down control key, just go ahead and paint your mask all the way around the model. Now, uh, a quicker way to uh, do this uh, also, of course, would be to just hold down the control key and select portions of the mask uh, all at once. So you can do it that way as well. Um, if you wanted to use this method instead of the uh, pencil method, you can also switch your masking to lasso, for example, and just simply uh, drag a selection. And maybe that would be uh, another good option. So you can decide. Um, we can always uh, slice or cut any extra geometry. So just simply uh, select the masking to uh, where you would like it to be. If you wanted to clean something up, so for example, in this case, let's say I wanna clean up this uh, selection here, you can hold on Control and then the Alt key, and then you can just simply reverse the masking and clean it up that way. So that's, that's an option. You can also do that um, on the bottom as well. And the other thing we can uh, decide is, do we want maybe our jacket to have a hood, right? So in my case, I think it, I think um, I do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, hold on the control key and switch back to my pen. And what I'm gonna do is, let's our, make our brush a little smaller and let's just uh, paint in the hood and don't worry about the mask uh, being perfect once again we can easily uh, cut and modify the geometry right all we need to do is uh, really just have kind of a base uh, shape. So once the masking is done, the next uh, step would be to extract this geometry. So to extract it, I'm going to go to Subtools, and I'm going to find on the bottom something that's called Extract. So let's go ahead and open that up. And one of the things we can do is maybe let's make our extraction smooth, and let's decide on the thickness. So by default, it's set to 0.02. If I click Extract, it gives me a little preview of what that looks like. 
and you can decide if that's too thick or too thin depending on the stylized or stylistic character you're making right and you'll also notice there's some uh, strangeness going on with the ears right because our character has ears so before we extracted we could have technically smoothed out the ears but we can clean up the geometry um, afterwards as well so for my jacket i think i'm going to go with 0.01 just to make it a little uh, thinner and go ahead and say uh, extract you can see that that feels a little bit better uh, maybe for this case and i'm going to say accept as soon as i press accept another layer was created so now i can select this layer and uh, technically i could uh, also hide the base mesh so now we're just left with something like this right so now uh, this is a uh, great start to begin uh, turning this into more of a jacket instead of kind of a skin tight uh, suit right so let's do this let's press control key and drag our selection to get rid of the masking right and another thing we can do before we start smoothing out some of these details that we don't want like the chest and the ears right we want to smooth all those out maybe the back um, it would be a lot easier if we turn this geometry if we dial down this geometry so it wasn't so high resolution so currently if I turn on my polyframe you can see that I have 643,000 points and that's just way too much for um, for the base mesh uh, at this point in time right so let's start dialing this down so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave my polyframe on because I want to keep an eye on my uh, poly groups and let's go ahead and go to uh, geometry and let's find something called Z Remesher. Let's open that up. And in here, uh, by default, I have it set to five and the adapt is on, right? So I'm just gonna leave it uh, with the default settings. The only thing I'm gonna change is gonna, I'm gonna tell uh, ZBrush to go ahead and keep the groups. I do want to have those two poly groups that I currently have, which is the red and the green. So let's uh, keep those and let's just say Z Remesh. All right, very nice. You can see that um, what this looks like, it's much easier to handle. So we went uh, down to 10,000 points. Um, at this point, we could start uh, cleaning this up a little bit. So we could hold down the shift key and maybe smooth out some of that ear uh, detail. We can also make our brush holding the, the S key, make the brush a little bit larger. And very carefully holding down the shift key, we could smooth out some of this uh, chest detail as well. Um, and you want to be careful, you don't want to uh, mess up these edges too much, right? So maybe just uh, don't go right to the end of these edges at this point, just maybe smooth it out. You can also do the same thing with the back, make sure you don't have any muscle detail uh, there as well. And uh, next thing we can do is, let's go ahead and uh, Z remesh this again. So I'm going to say uh, half and just do another Z remesh. And let's just keep dialing it down. So right now I'm at 6,000 points. I'm going to go ahead and go lower. And now I'm at 4,000. And this is starting to look a little more uh, manageable as far as, uh, let's say this was a game uh, asset, right? So uh, let's decide if we want to keep it at this or maybe we want it even lower. You can always turn, turn off the adapt. Let's go ahead and zero mesh it without the adapted on. And you can see the distribution of topology is much uh, different. The edges are not sort of bunched up in one place, right? So at this point, uh, we took it down all the way to 2000. And I think this is pretty great. If we wanted uh, to clean this up even more, we can always manually remove some of these edges. And um, Let's go ahead and take a look and see how it's done in ZBrush. So to do this, uh, you would need to go to Z modeling uh, brush. So select Z modeler. And if you hover over an edge and press uh, spacebar, you could see that there is something called delete and uh, you want to select edge loop complete, right? So what this is going to allow you to do, let's zoom in a little more. And again, make sure that active symmetry is on. And for the sake of, uh, jacket design right we know that a human um, shape will fold in the shoulder so you want all of these edges 
but you know that the biceps is not going to fold, right, if this is a game model or an animation. So maybe you want to delete this edge here. To do this, uh, just select the edge and just tap. And you can see how that's quickly going to start deleting the edges and simplify the geometry. Again, for the elbow, we want these edges here because we want to be able to bend them. But maybe we don't need um, some of these here, right? So let's let's go ahead and delete some of these. And again, this is just a matter of preference, but this is how uh, you would manually reduce the topology or control the topology, right? If you wanted to uh, add the edge back in, you can always go to uh, insert and you can do a single edge loop and just simply, if you uh, click on it, you can see a new edge was added. So you have a lot of control uh, controlling your topology um, here in ZBrush, right? All right, so the next step, once you uh, got to this point, would be uh, turning this and maybe um, sculpting it just a little bit closer to what the final result needs to be. So for that, let's go ahead and bring back our base mesh. And let's start thinking about this as an actual jacket, right? So obviously for the jacket to fit this particular shape, uh, it needs to be modified a little bit. So for that, you want to select your uh, jacket layer. And we can also, uh, if we wanted to, we could definitely rename it. So to rename it, uh, let's just click on this button here and call it jacket. Maybe that would be uh, helpful. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our move tool, make it a little bit larger. And again, I'm still in the uh, X symmetry mode. Let's just very slowly start sculpting this to fit our character just a little bit better, right? And maybe this is the part where you want to grab some references and just see what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of fit you're going for. So maybe we could pull this out a little bit. And I'm not really worried about, um, you know, doing too much detail, but I'm just looking at the overall shape and seeing uh, how does it fit as far as the jacket go, right? Um, if I wanted to inflate some of this parts here, there's a few ways we could do that. We can grab our inflate brush and very slowly we could just inflate some of this so it looks a little more like a jacket and again, not so uh, skin tight. Holding down the shift key, we can smooth it, uh, smooth it a little bit, but you definitely don't want to overdo it. And just let's just inflate all of this a little, a little more. And jumping between inflate and move, I can keep working on kind of the overall shape. If this was a jacket, obviously it wouldn't be uh, grabbing the body like this. It would be more flowy. So. You want to go with something like this. Very nice. Let's go ahead and do the front. Let's just um, find a good angle and just adjust the bottom of the jacket. Let's make the brush really large and let's adjust the, the chest part and just kind of move this out. So it covers the chest a little better. And you can uh, see how it's very quickly becoming uh, it's getting to the point where this is very useful, right? So now we can make maybe these edges a little sharp. We can rework some of these edges here and make sure uh, it all makes sense, right? Very cool. Let's also add one more component to our jacket as a base model, right? So one of the other components that I would like to have is a uh, zipper. And to uh, add the zipper, let's just simply use the built-in uh, zipper here in ZBrush, right? So to do this, um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to my brushes. Um, let's find something called IMM zipper. And there's a couple different options. So I'm just gonna go with this first one. And the uh, next thing I would like to do 
is there's uh, a closed zipper, there's an open one, and there's the open uh, zipper with the little uh, thing, right? So what I wanna do is let's go uh, pick the third option first and let's just test it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure, again, I'm on my jacket layer and let's just simply, uh, we could turn off the frame, um, wireframe and let's press X to turn off the active symmetry. And I do want my zipper to be kind of large because uh, this is going to be maybe a uh, stylized, you know, uh, asset. And let's just let's just drag and see what kind of results we would get. So this is clearly uh, way too large. So what I'm going to do is holding down the S key, I can make the brush much smaller and just tap on the line. And it's uh, still large. So I'm just going to dial this down. Currently it's at nine. And my scale might be a little bit different than yours, so just uh, you know, dial this down as it makes sense on your side. So maybe I'm gonna go with something like four, press enter, and just uh, tap, tap the line. And I think uh, I'm kind of happy with this. I know it does seem kind of uh, large, but I kind of like this because again, this is gonna be more of a stylized kind of a cartoony uh, jacket, right? So. Uh, now what I would like to do is I, I could just I can move this around if I wanted to and into position or um, I could always tap and do uh, control let's just undo it and this time uh, now uh, I know that the draw size that I'm looking for is gonna be four so I'm just gonna carefully draw the zipper where it needs to be all right so something like this should work and uh the next thing we could do is before we start moving it uh, e uh even into a better position uh let's go ahead and tap to get rid of this line but um, as you can see the zipper is unmasked and the jacket is still masked which will allow us to grab the move tool make the move tool uh, very big and let's just very carefully move it right to the edge of of our jacket and I can control the size of my brush if I wanted to have a little more precision and very carefully I'm just moving it to the very edge so it's almost like peeking out or it's 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 almost uh, laying on the very edge of the jacket right so it makes uh, kind of sense as far as the zipper goes. And once you are happy with it, uh, let's go ahead and go to split and let's do a uh, split on mass point. That's gonna put the zipper on its own layer, right? And uh, which is great. And now all we need to do is just create the other size, the other side of uh, the zipper that, um, that we want. So I'm gonna go back to my jacket layer and let's go ahead and go back to the zipper brush. So next, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select, uh, let's see, I'm gonna select this guy here and let's just see if it makes sense. So now if we drag another one right next to it, uh, that uh, does make sense. So let's just see if we can do a better job positioning it uh, for our initial uh, position. So I'm just gonna try, attempt to match the top All right, so I think uh, this will work. So I'm going to repeat the same process again. I'm going to tap on my mesh one time to get rid of that line. I'm going to grab my move brush and make it kind of large. And make sure you find a good angle that makes sense as far as moving the zipper to, to the edge, right? You don't want to do it from this angle because then it's going to go inside the jacket. You want to find an angle that makes uh, sense, which is, in my case, it's going to be something like this. I don't want to lift it too much. I don't want to go off the jacket, but at the same time, I don't want it to go into the jacket. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but as you move it around, you will see uh, that this makes sense, right? So let's go ahead and just kind of move it into position. And if we wanted to, we can even stretch it to make to, to have it go all the way to the end. All right. And we can also adjust this 
if uh, necessary from from this angle as well all right so I think uh, I think that works and once again I'm gonna repeat the same process one more time I'm gonna go to uh, split and let's go ahead and do uh, split on mass and let's go ahead and select our zipper and now we can go ahead and merge them together so I'm gonna merge it down and now it's on one layer right so now we have the jacket on one layer and we have the zipper on the other layer all right and once you're happy uh, with the position and you think the zipper looks good uh, the next thing we should do is let's go ahead and um, bring this into uh, Maya and create kind of custom UVs uh, for this base mesh before we subdivide it and add additional details like the creases maybe uh, you know the pocket or any folds that we want right so let's go ahead and do that so um, to bring it into uh, Maya I am gonna merge these layers just for the sake of simplicity let's just go ahead and merge them down and now I just have one uh, one layer I'm gonna uh, select this layer and go to uh, export and let's uh, go ahead and export this as a FBX file all right so let's uh, let's go ahead and bring our uh, jacket uh, into my app. So I'm going to say file import and grab my FBX. All right, once it comes in, the uh, next step that I like to do is turn on my wireframe on shaded. Um, and uh, let's see. So the next thing we should do is probably let's select our mesh and under UV, let's go to UV editor, right? So you have this uh, UV editor window. If I select the uh, current mesh, uh, you can see that there's no UVs uh, at all, right? So uh, let's create some. So I'm going to go to UV. I'm going to go to planar. And uh, looking here, I want to make sure that this is set to Z, right? The reason being is because Z is the front. I'm just going to say apply. And that's going to give me some kind of a reference of where my UVs are. If I press W, I can move it off the grid. And the only uh, space I'm interested in is this uh, zero to one space, this square right here, right? So you can see um, from the green to the red and to the edge right here. So everything else is gonna be, uh, you know, not important for us. So we just wanna make sure that any UVs that we unfold are in this space for Substance Painter to see it. All right, so let's very quickly um, just unfold this. So um, how do we do it? Well, one of the things we could do is if we double click on our jacket, press W, um, we can move it out of the way, only leaving the zipper. All right, so now if I select uh, the zipper, I can press W and move it into position. Another thing I can do is I can go to UV. I can uh, click on auto seams. So let's go ahead and do that. Once it's done, let's right click, go to face mode, select all the faces and let's go to our UV toolkit and just click unfold. Um, once that finishes, let's go ahead and scroll down to arrange and layout and let's do unstack shells. And that's gonna uh, neatly kind of, pat, uh, you know, uh, organize them together for us. If you press F, you can zoom in and take a look and see how it's being unfolded, which is great. So for texturing and substance painter, this is uh, pretty much perfect. So I'm gonna press W and move it up out of the way. Again, just uh, leaving this space empty. And next, let's just focus on this jacket. So pressing W, I can move into position and let's talk about this. So, all right, so how do we delete the double geometry that we do not need? So let's start with the sleeve. Uh, I'm gonna select the very edge of the sleeve here. I'm gonna double click to make a selection. And then if I go to symmetry, I can activate object X. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make exactly same location on the uh, same selection on the other side. Now I'm gonna press delete on my keyboard and you can see that that whole loop was deleted, right? Uh, next, let's go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom here. I'm just gonna go around and holding down the shift key, I can kind of grow my selection. And I'm gonna grow it all the way to this point here. And let's just keep going actually. I'm just gonna keep going. So uh, I know that I don't need any of these faces here. So I'm gonna go all the way up. We can also uh, hide our grid, the floor, 
maybe we don't need to see it and let's just go all the way up but um, I do know that it's kind of hard to see here but I do know that I do want the hood to have the uh, the back right I, I really just don't want all of this stuff but I do want this here so uh, how do we uh, deal with this well all we need to do is just make a loop uh, selection all the way to the parts that we don't need and uh, once you are done you can just press delete and what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us this island to be kind of separate from everything else and now you can see that this island here inside this entire inner shell is not being connected to anything which means if I double click on it and uh, it's gonna select itself including all the extra geo inside the sleeves right and now if I just simply press delete that's gonna leave me with an external shell and uh, clean everything else so I really don't want any of those extra polygons again I do want these right because these are gonna be seen behind the head all right very nice and that's gonna give us a lower poly count as well for our base and now let's just go ahead and unfold this so to unfold it um, we can do a couple things. So let's uh, think about this as a tailor would, right? So how do we unfold this um, properly? So to do the sleeve, let's just make a cut, uh, maybe. And you can have a, you, you can take a, a a look at an actual jacket and see how that's being cut. So usually you have a seam, you know, in this area here or here. I'm just gonna go with this here. So I'm gonna double click on my edge. Um, and what I'm going to do next is in the UV editor, I'm just going to go and uh, click on my cut button. And that's going to make a cut. And you can see that in the UV editor as well. So these are now separate, right? Which means if I right click and go to face mode, double click on these and press W, I can move them around, right? So they're, they're disconnected from the jacket as far as the UVs go. And now let's decide uh, where we want the seam to be to in order to unfold this essentially a cylinder, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, select the bottom of the sleeve and just go all the way to the front of the sleeve. So maybe go all the way over here and then do, let's do another cut. And now uh, if I select both of them and do an unfold, you can see uh, what's happening here, right? Now we don't want to leave them like this. We we do want them flat. So um, if I zoom in, I can see which edge is holding them together still. So I'm going to select this edge here and do another cut. And now if I uh, double click on this and do unfold, you can see how this is beautifully um, unfolded, right? And that's exactly what I want. Very nice. So now these are done. I'm going to press W and just move them aside by the zipper. I don't want to uh, worry about them anymore for now. And the next step is let's go ahead and take a look at what's left. So now we are left with all of this here. Now one trick that I personally like to do, this is just a preference when I do UVs, I don't like to look at the uh, parts of the model that I already unwrapped. So what I like to do is if you go into a face mode and select all these, um, you can go to uh, display and do a hide selection right so um, if you want to put it on your shelf right here I'm on the Mac so what I could do for example is if I go to display um, hide and do command shift you can see that this button was added to my shelf and then to unhide it um, what I could do is say show and I could say show less hidden so I can add that and I can also say show all so these three are always being used by me when I do UVs uh, personally so right now uh, you can see I selected the both sleeves and the zipper and I can just say hide selected and then if I click here you can see that uh, Maya is not showing it to me and now I know that those pieces are already done so just again a, a personal preference uh, let's go ahead and make more seams. So uh, the uh, next part that we could cut out is maybe the hood. So let's go ahead and just simply make a 
um, selection all the way around, right? So maybe let's go do something like this. And let's select this. And uh, once you get to that, uh, if you press F, you can jump back into that view. If you missed any edges, make sure make sure that none of the edges are missed. That's kind of a common mistake. Um, but you can see how I'm selecting my uh, seam to be right. So it's gonna go. It, it goes all the way around. And then it goes to the front and then what I'm doing is I'm finding I'm going back down to this uh, open space and now if I press cut that's gonna allow me to double click on this press W and move this down and of course do an unfold right if I press W I can move it aside and now uh, what I'm left with is just the hood again if I double click on this I can always hide this telling me hey that piece is done don't worry about it and for uh, for this, let's just simply make a cut from here. Holding on the shift key, I'm just gonna go all the way to the top, just like that. And now if I make a cut, I can now uh, select this and do an unfold. Um, and now if I press W, I can see that there's two different pieces, right? All right, really nice. So now, uh, how do we take all of these random floating islands and position them in the zero to one space? Well, the first thing uh, we could do is, again, do uh, show all. So let's bring everything back. And now what we could do is, let's go ahead and I'm gonna jump out of the symmetry. And I'm just gonna, holding down the shift key, I'm gonna select all of these pieces here, uh, or UV shells, and just let's click on layout. All right, once you press on uh, layout, the other thing we can talk about is do we want to leave it like this or do we want to uh, do like a custom touch to this? I think we can make it a little prettier, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this, press E. And let's just uh, do a nicer job aligning these. All right, so once you're happy with your uh, UV shells layout, uh, another thing we could do is we don't really need to keep these together. So like as a block, for example, if I select all of these, press W, um, I could move them around and I could definitely press R and scale them into place. That's one way of doing it. Uh, if you didn't want to scale it and you do, didn't want to lose, um, you want to utilize the space a little more for whatever reason, uh, you could always right click and go to UV shell and just grab maybe uh, like portions of this and then press W and you know put them into position uh, that way because they don't really need to be uh, together technically so that's uh, another way of uh, maybe utilizing some of this uh, space so it doesn't feel like it's being uh, wasted right and uh, that's totally fine so um, for uh, for me, I think that's fine. So I'm gonna leave it. If you wanted to check your UVs and make sure that it does indeed actually works and it looks good, you can always press on this button here. That's gonna give you a really solid preview of your uh, textures. And of course, uh, you do want to make sure that this uh, these boxes or these squares are not stretched, right? Because anything that is stretched. Uh, that means your textures are going to be stretched or your designs, right? Uh, I did make my jacket just a little bit larger here because if uh, if I uh, end up adding any kind of a logo or design in the back, maybe the, this portion of the texture could have a little more resolution. So keep that in mind as well, right? Depending on what the design for the jacket is, maybe, um, you know, it makes more sense to give some of the stuff more res than others. Uh, the sleeves, I could have overlapped them because technically these are the same. Um, but I didn't uh, in case, you know, if you're doing a jacket and you wanted to make any, uh, write any text on here, uh, that wouldn't work if you overlap it because the text obviously would show up backwards in your texture. So, you know, again, it depends on what the design is, but 
Uh, usually, if you want to create something interesting and unique, uh, you probably don't want to overlap your uh, textures too much. All right, so now you can see this was much. Uh, I felt like you have a little more control here versus uh, ZBrush. So it's a, it's a cool workflow to go between the two. So now what we could do now, since we have these UVs done, we could jump back into ZBrush, uh, subdivide our model, and add more uh, details for uh, substance uh, painter uh, baking, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna close this, and now let's just go ahead and select this, and let's just, um, if you wanted to, you can also uh, open up your channel box so you can see you have all this extra history. We don't really want that history to be baked into the model, so clear your history. Uh, that's good practice. And let's just simply export this out and override our other FBX file. All right, really nice. Now I'm going to jump back into ZBrush. I'm going to grab my FBX file and say open. I don't want to import cameras on, I'm just going to say okay. All right, so once it's done, you can clearly see that this is a different model, right? We don't have that uh, double geo. Uh, for the sake of preview, maybe uh, we can go down to uh, display properties, display product, properties, and turn on double. So now we can see uh, that. Uh, another thing we can do is if we're going to subdivide our jacket and add more um, geometry for uh, detail, uh, we don't want to do that to the to the zipper. All right, so how do we split this now? So if you wanted to split it, uh, one thing you could do is uh, click on auto groups. And if I turn on the uh, my polyframe and click on auto groups, you can see what that did. It grouped all the jacket pieces into, I mean, the jacket mesh into one, and then the zipper is essentially our different polygroups, right? Uh, which means if I uh, hold on Control Shift and click, it's going to uh, hide the zipper. And now if I go into split, I can say uh, split hidden, and that's going to separate the jacket and the zipper into two separate layers, right? Which also means um, if I uh, press Control D, I can subdivide this as many times as, as, as you want. So usually if you want to add nice detail, you know, you could go some, somewhere to up all the way up to a million or, you know, 281,000 is probably too low uh, to add nice folds. So I am going to go to a million and then we can also optimize it if we needed to before um, exporting it to Substance Painter. So let's go ahead and quickly add a few uh, fun details, right? I personally, when it comes to this stuff, uh, just a personal preference, there's uh, unlimited amount of uh, brushes, but I like to use one called uh, a fold brush, which I'll include in the descriptions in case you wanna download it from ArtStation for free as well. But that's the one that I'm gonna be using uh, today. And a similar uh, process to that, if you didn't want to use a brush, would just be using something like the standard to add volume and then use pinch to pinch the creases. So it's essentially exactly the same thing. But I do like this brush, so I'm going to uh, import it. And here it is. It's called Cloth, uh, cloth Folds and Wrinkles. Again, I'll include the link, so I'm going to import mine. And uh, now... Uh, if I press X on my keyboard, I can just start creating uh, detail right on my jacket as I wish, right? So Let's start adding some folds. So I'm going to uh, do that. Maybe uh, holding down the Alt key, I can dig in and just uh, quickly change the size of my brush and just kind of um, go between Alt and All right, so once you added the detail that you like, so this is pretty much just using 
the um, folding brush, right? That you, that you're gonna be able to download as well. This is what I uh, came up with. If I do a quick uh, BPR, you can see what that looks like. All right, so the next step is gonna be, uh, let's go ahead and export this out to Substance Painter. Now, uh, we have a situation, uh, which is we have our zipper, right, which is separate. And then we have our model that has um, six subdivision levels, right? So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate uh, the mesh for the jacket. And let's go ahead and hide one of them and then take the top one. And let's go ahead and create the low version of that. And I'm gonna delete higher. And so now I'm left just with the low res model. And I do need this low res model to include the zipper, right? So uh, I need, I'm gonna create two zippers. I'm gonna hide one of the zippers. Then I'm gonna take this one and um, bring it up. Then select my low um, poly version and just simply merge it back down and say, okay. And now what happens is I have the zipper uh, and the low res model as part of one mesh, right? So now if I wanted to, I can actually rename this to low. So I know what that is. And now I need to do the same thing with this one, which is gonna be our high one, right? So let's go ahead and uh, do the same thing. I'm gonna go to geometry and I'm gonna delete lower. So now I just, uh, just have the high one and I don't need the poly frame. And now I do want the zipper to be part of this high one. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just gonna merge down and say, okay. And let's go ahead and rename it and call this high, right? So now we have two. We have a low and a high version. All right, so now let's go ahead and export out our high one. And we definitely don't wanna do the 1.1 million. So we do need to decimate this. So let's go ahead and pre-process current. And I'm gonna leave it at 20% and just do decimate current. So that um, brought our model down to 226 points. If we turn on our polyframe, we can see what that looks like. So all the detail is preserved and you can't even tell that this was optimized, right? All right, really nice. So now uh, let's go ahead and export this out. And I'm gonna call this jacket underscore high and do a save. I'm gonna say okay. All right. So as our next step, let's go ahead and jump into Substance Painter. Do File, New, and let's select our file. So I'm gonna select jacket underscore low and say open. And I'm gonna set my document resolution to uh, 2K. And I'm gonna make sure that import cameras and auto unwrap are off and say okay. All right, so here's my jacket as a low res model. Now let's go ahead and bake the high resolution one. So for that, I'm gonna go down to my texture uh, set settings and go to bake mesh. I'm gonna set this to 2K and high poly, um, in the high poly parameters, let's go ahead and select our jacket underscore high and say open. And you can see what that looks like. And uh, you can also see the red areas that are popping out outside of the baking, right? So this is telling us that we need to pump up our max uh, front values. Let's go ahead and increase them until those red, uh, those red uh, things are gone. So I'm gonna pump it all the way up just like this. Very nice. And for anti-aliasing, anti, uh, for anti-aliasing, I'm going to set, set it to super sampling uh, four. And you're welcome to play with more uh, settings, but I think I'm going to leave it just like this and do a bake. All right. So here is our bake model. Um, I'm pretty pleased with mine. If you wanted to, uh, let's go ahead and throw some materials on it, just so we can preview our uh, mesh just a little bit better, right? So I'm just gonna search for anything that says metal for my um, zipper. And I think uh, this is fine. I'm just gonna drag it right on. All right, 
Next, I'm going to, uh, let's go ahead and right click on it and just say uh, white mask. And I'm gonna click on this polygon fill tool, select my uh, mesh fill and just click on the jacket, right? And that's gonna create a, a, a mask for us just leaving the zipper to be uh, silver or metal. Next, let's go ahead and create another layer and for this layer, I'm going to put it underneath the zipper. And uh, in here, let's go ahead and change the color of our jacket. So maybe for this example, the jacket, for example, could be um, blue. And if we wanted to, we can change the roughness of the jacket. We can figure out if we want it to be what uh, type of material it is, right? And we can also add a little metallic. We need to but you can also of course throw in uh, any other uh, existing material on here and um, play around but the bottom line is uh, just a this for a, a quick test um, something like this works pretty well if you uh, wanted to add some additional detail maybe you wanted to put a you know kind of a logo on the back let's go do that so let's look at some alphas that maybe we can use uh, for design so um, I think for the sake of this tutorial let's just grab one that already exists so I'm gonna grab maybe how about this design right here this flower design so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new uh, fill layer and I would like it to be just the color. So I'm going to hold on the old key and do color. And uh, I'm going to right click and do a black mask. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the uh, black mask. So I'm going to select my black mask and I'm going to scroll down to where it says alpha. And I'm just going to simply drag this flower into my alpha and make my brush kind of uh, large, right? And let's go ahead and just stamp this right on the back of the character or the, the jacket. So maybe something uh, along these lines. And I do need to change my grayscale from black to uh, white. And I'm just gonna stamp it right on there. All right, if I select this uh, color, I can of course control it. So let's say uh, I want my stamp to be white. And as you remember, we made the uh, jacket kind of a higher res. So the logo on the back looks uh, really, really nice. I think that's great. Another thing we can do is if we wanted to, we can add some something on the sleeves. So for that, let's go ahead and jump into our uh, 3D 2D view. And maybe uh, let's create a, another um, layer, but let's go ahead and create another uh, layer that's just the color. We'll make it just white again. Let's do a, another uh, black mask. And let's just simply select a brush that maybe has uh, basic hard edges. I'm gonna make my brush stroke kind of small and let's just test it and see um, if we like, for example, if we added a couple lines on the side of the jacket. And if you like this and you think that looks cool, um, we can of course activate our uh, symmetry right so this will allow us to draw the line on both uh, both sides you can see what that looks like and now uh, if we wanted to we can come to our 2d view and let's just simply draw i'm going to make my brush actually smaller and i'm going to go um, from here to maybe here and i'm going to do another one from here to maybe here so i have a kind of, kind of a double line all right, now to clean this up, all I need to do is just grab my um, brush, my um, eraser. I'm going to double click on my basic brush to change my alpha. And now what I can do is just simply click, hold down shift and make a line and just cut the line uh, right at the very top and the bottom. And you can see what that looks like. So it gives a kind of a cool, clean uh, lines for us. So just a really fast example, let's go ahead and just jump into 3D view and take a look. Just a quick uh, design, right? Um, I'm not spending too much time on focusing on painting this, but you get the idea. 
All right, and then if we wanted to uh, a quick uh, render, we can use iRay for that. So for example, let's go ahead and leave it on this and just do um, iRay, do iRay. And uh, for this example, um, we can switch this to maybe, let's do 10 minutes. And another thing we can do is maybe let's change our lighting to something a little more maybe exciting. Uh, we can also change the color from background to maybe a solid color. And we can decide what, what kind of uh, background we like, dark or, or light, right? But at this point, it's just uh, playing in a matter of uh, preference. We can turn on our anti-alias. All right, so that's pretty much it. I think I'm going to stop the tutorial here, but um, this would be the uh, process that you can use uh, a complete pipeline for an asset to take it from ZBrush, uh, jump into uh, Maya, and then take it into Substance Painter for, uh, for texturing. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one.